Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, January 19th, around noontime, mountain time, 2022. It's looking like a shift in pattern for February with heavy, more heavy snow coming to the East Coast and more snow happening right now in Kentucky. And that's the big story, this storm system. Record snowfall set at Buffalo Airport for the second time this January. Keep calm. It's boom time. Impressive snow accumulations fell across western New York Monday, breaking snow records for a second time in two weeks. And the storm also, just not snow in the system, there were tornadoes. Two tor Florida tornadoes destroyed dozens of homes near where my brother lives down on the Gulf Coast there near Fort Myers. In fact, it appears four tornadoes with speeds of up to 118 miles per hour have left hundreds homeless. The National Weather Service confirmed an EF1 Tornado topping 110 in Charlotte County, an EF2 twister at 118, sent debris flying through the sky and left several homes in Fort Myers torn to bits. And another EF0 tornado was also recorded Sunday downing power lines. So thoughts and prayers about those in Florida. Snowfall records fell everywhere, including Asheville, where the uh, old record of 7 inches in 1891 is replaced by 10 inches from this storm. Hello. Going back into the grand minima days there. And GSP had new records 6.1 inches, beating out the 5.7 inches back in 65. That's some North Carolina records. We have some snow totals from South Carolina and North Carolina as well here. Greenville, 5.5. Greer, 6. Spartanburg had 8. Travelers Rest, 9.5. Hendersonville, 10. Waynesville, 11. Saluda, 10. So they were picking up some pretty heavy snow. And more snow is coming in just 24 hours to these regions. Record-breaking snow in Rochester is from the storm as well. The new record was 10 inches, the old 9.5 back in 1958. The biggest daily snowfall in four years. And 11.1 .1 inches for a storm total in Rochester. They're also cleaning up in Ontario after record-breaking snowfall. And you'll see why when we check out the 72-hour snow totals. So let's just light them up. There they are. Impressive totals in the Northeast, especially in the Lake Districts here. And that's where the heaviest snow is, 12 to 18 inches. So if you just come over here to Toronto in the Ontario uh, section there, and it's going to be some heavy snow probably laying there. So guys, if you're from that region, tell us how much you got up in Ontario. Significant winter weather in the south and east currently. There are winter storm watches and warnings for the entire state, just about, of Kentucky. A wintery mix is expected this afternoon into tonight from the mid-Mississippi Valley into the mid-Atlantic and then southern New England, along with the cold front. That's going to bring heavy snow on the coast of South and North Carolina. And we'll show you those models in just a minute. One or more waves of low pressure tracking east from this front will likely bring areas of heavy snow and significant ice from south Texas to the Carolinas, Thursday night to Saturday morning. So Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, south Texas in winter storm warning. And let's check the models. Here is the snow through Friday morning right there. So there's going to be some significant snow in central Kentucky. It looks like you could be seeing six to eight inches. West Virginia, western West Virginia as well. And that snow is going to move east. Going to blow up on the Delmarva Peninsula tonight, tonight into tomorrow morning. So you're looking at a few inches, one to three maybe. South Jersey, Jersey, Philly, uh, Washington, D.C., all of Delaware. So heads up there. You're going to be seeing some winter action. And that's going to drop down through Friday into Saturday on the coast. Saturday, you're going to be picking up heavy snow on the North Carolina coast. Maybe Hatteras. Be a very bizarre storm. And that snow may all extend all the way down into Georgia. And there's that snow in Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. So heads up, a winter pattern will continue with more and more snow. And then at the end of the month here, we're tracking a big boomer up the Northeast Corridor, which is going to bring some more heavy snow to the Northwest at the end of the month. So more snow coming to the Northwest. Good news. More good news, 2021, the fewest global hurricanes. Yes, 2021 saw the fewest hurricanes ever in the satellite era. Did you see that reported anywhere? We didn't. Well, here, <laughs> seismic update. Uh, no quakes of note. Hawaii is rocking and the tip of Greenland. That's just some interesting places, to say the least. And we did have a geomagnetic storm in the last 12 hours from a small CME that clipped us 
and brought us up to KP6 for three, dropped down to KP5 for three more, geomagnetic instability for three, a nine-hour package of geomagnetic storm there. We're back in the calm. Hunga Tonga is, not, is still calm, but it is burping a little. We've been monitoring the Himawari regularly, so any activity from Hunga Tonga, you'll be the first to know. Hunga Tonga high pay. SO2 plume continues to travel over the Indian Ocean. Here is the Australian continent. Now you can see where it is in the Indian Ocean. The aerosol plume from the violent explosion continues to extend further over the Indian Ocean. The latest Himawari 8 satellite visual visualization of the SO2 in the atmosphere show the SO2 plume has been advancing towards eastern Africa, coming from Australia from the last few days. And we have reports of it actually cooling in Australia as this plume moved over, which makes sense. We also have an amazing video on the climate effects of Honga Tonga. The Honga Tonga eruption is still being studied and more and more data is coming out. And we now know that the stratospheric injection went up to about 24 miles high, which is quite significant. And because of the violent nature, most of the blast material went up into the stratosphere, not into the troposphere. So the SO4 that they're monitoring is probably tropospheric. And the stratospheric material is high up there and well in place. This is uh, the information coming from Calypso. And based on the information we're getting, there will be climate effects for the next year or two with the potential of dropping global temperatures in the southern hemisphere, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degrees C. Here are some of the photo gallery pictures of some of the devastation coming out of Honga Tonga. And there is significant ash, as you can see here. Over all structures, you can see the ash on the, the roof there. And I guess they're cleaning ash in the streets there. A couple inches, maybe an inch of ash in that shot. And that they've been cut off. There's some tsunami damage. They've been cut off and the main communication line is severed. So it won't be back up for days. So this information is coming out sparse, to say the least. So there are some of the pictures from Honga Tonga. And a couple more here we'll show you. Some more ash-covered vehicle there. And look how they put the windshield wiper on. That's nice. Wow, that looks terrible there. Just destructive. More destruction from the tsunami. For now to the weather, we are uh -oh. just below freezing right now at this hour. We had a video playing in the background. I apologize for that. So all these links will be below as usual. And some interesting science to close up the podcast Around 2.5 million years ago, hominids like you and I picked up tools for the first time, and we've been obsessed with stuff since that moment. And as we put the pieces together, we now know that supernova may have changed this human behavior, and that it happened through cosmic radiation and genetics. DNA muta mutations do not occur randomly. We know that cosmic rays cause mutations, and we now know that 2 million years ago, these cosmic rays may have sent us on a path to where we are today. Just fa fascinating to think about. And that's supernova explosions. Now, what's nova -ing? The closest star I know of is called the sun. And a supernova exploded dangerously close to Earth 2.5 million years ago, changing the course of humanity. Now, that's a boom. So are these cliff dwellings at the Navajo National Monument which we'll be visiting just about 24 hours. So we're packing, and we hope you join us along with the for the journey. We'll be posting many, many podcasts over the next 48 hours on our trip west into the desert of Arizona and Utah. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where facts are fiction. And Diamond's channel is trying to work it all out. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the heroes that shared this video. We love you. Be safe. That's a boom to knowledge. <laughs>